Okay, welcome back, Ati. Um, this is now the practical side that we'll, we'll be dealing with. Uh, we're going to spend some time a little bit all the way to lunchtime. And Mitchie, can I get your attention? Okay. I, did, I want your attention. I didn't say anything. That's the problem. Damia, can I get your attention? Okay, great. So now we're back. So this is the practical session side. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Dr. Rio to really take a look at this whole thing and then explain to us what is expected, what is our mission, what are we attempting to accomplish when we're going to group work, and perhaps getting back also to plenary. I'm leaving it up to him, and he'll give you the framework of it. Of course, with uh, uh, Mr. Gift. Thank you very much. So welcome back. Um, so just, uh, I want to sort of start with uh, something that picks up from what we were discussing before uh, the coffee break. And the element that I think really is worth stressing here is I said something about top down and bottom up, right? So, okay, that sounds pretty straightforward, top down, bottom up. But we added a few elements to it here, which I think uh, actually are, are really central for us to understand what we're doing. Which is, we talk about paradigmatic change, or we talk about transformative change. And Jesse put that up on the screen with a quote from Al Yud, uh, which, which was very helpful. But it raises the question of how that happens. And I just want us to be conscious, not necessarily um, uh, you know, prescriptive about this, but just, just to be conscious of the, the, the point that you know, there's, there's a strong legacy of um, radical, revolutionary, transformative leadership. And I think that that is something that the, in a sense, doesn't respect what we know about reality. In other words, I think that one of the crucial things that has come out of social science, but also out of history, is that this idea that you can engineer radical change as if you were God, doesn't work. It's a fantasy. Okay, so let's get back to the point that Jesse was raising. About that. It's got limitations. Well, ex post it might sound like a nice story. But it never happened that way. Now, the, the thing is that doesn't necessarily disempower us from having ideals. But the question becomes, when we think about the empowerment that I was talking about, the bottom up, in many ways, the bottom up is the origins of transformative change. The only thing is we don't know what it's going to look like. Now, that's a certain degree of humility that I think is important as a way of approaching the entire discussion we're going to have. Is that if, in the back of our minds, we're looking for some bottom-up replacement for the top-down engineer, I think we're going to be doing something that won't get us very far. Because if we're, if we're saying, and, and look, this has to do, and I, I don't want to, this has to do with issues around scale. So we talked about scale, and we talked about benchmarking, and it has something to do with this. Because I might take the best benchmark from anywhere in the world, but if the point was the voyage, the trip that I took, it's unique to me. It's my voyage. I can never benchmark somebody else's voyage. It's always my voyage. And insofar as we're beginning to try, I think, to recuperate, recover, the importance of process as product, Learning as an intrinsically valuable thing, regardless of what else, whatever else somebody has done. We're in a different territory here. And I just want us to, to be conscious of the fact that our thinking is very often dominated by 
the goal of finding the engineer's top-down solution, even if we do it bottom-up, or finding something that can be massified, produced cheaply at scale, which is fine and terrific, wonderful, but it's only one part of reality. Reality is complex and emergent. It is not designed. And so part of this process is about finding ways to make better use of what is potentially very radical, but we don't know that it's radical in advance. And we see it only afterwards because it's emerged from the diversity of the reality around us. So I'm, I'm just again trying to position what we're doing here in contrast, let me call it the planning. Planning has had a long history, strategic planning, of being very engineering, top-down, we know best. Linear. Linear. Past to future. And I wanted to make a link to something important that we talked about yesterday that I didn't mention, which is that we held a conference in South Africa, an Africa Future Forum, UNESCO, and Millennium Project. And one of the things that we talked about there was how do we get, how do we diversify our thinking so that the way we look at the future is not just as something we would like to colonize. So this is not decolonizing our thinking in a sense. It's not taking a colonial attitude towards tomorrow. But I know best on the basis of something. And therefore, I'm going to create the future in my image. It's a very strong temptation, obviously. And there's some great strengths in that as well. But it leaves a large part of reality out of the picture. In particular, specificity and emergence. The genuine rootedness of what people know and do and their own way of seeing the world around them. So again, I'm just trying to reinforce what we're, what we're trying to get to here. I've been going on for too long. The key uh, now is to break up into groups, and we don't really, the timing is going to have to be adjusted, which is fine. That's one of, the, one of the virtues, by the way, of this process, is that it is not artificial. We don't decide in advance. We live the, the we walk the talk, and we adapt the program. So we have about an hour from, from 12.30 to 1.30 before lunch. And what I'd like you to do in that one hour is break up into groups, uh, and Ms. Serena has some, some suggestions for the groups, and we'll We'll, we'll adjust the groups. Again, nothing's written in stone. We have uh, multiple languages uh, for the breakout groups. Uh, we should adjust that. People should feel comfortable. We have good diversity in the group, so we want to incorporate that. So let's create the breakout groups. And the breakout groups have a, one task. And you'll see, I don't have a pen here for the, you'll see that, that, that and I'll, I'll explain this probably tomorrow again, is that this process is not something new. It's something old. It's called a learning curve. And it starts from the very simple, it gets more difficult this afternoon, and then it gets a sort of easier again tomorrow. The first stage right now is from tacit to explicit. What you have in your head, you want to bring out and make explicit in your group. And the idea is to think about the future in a very uh, direct way uninhibited way. There's no right or wrong answer. We're not looking for you as experts to tell us the future. We want to hear basically what you think, what you feel, and I use the word feel because it's important, because one of the things we're also trying to do is to introduce affect, not just sort of the, the, the analytical in its cold sense, but to create a broader understanding of what constitutes the way we observe reality. Reality includes emotion. And so we want to begin to include that. And here the idea would be simply to say, don't tell me the story of the, 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 the movie, how you got there. Just think of 2045 and what do you expect will happen in North Africa with respect to water and urbanization. So this is just three or four bullet points that each of you will be asked to put up, to, to write down on a little sticky. And then you'll go around the table and you'll discuss it, okay? First task, expectations. This is a prediction. Most of our cities will be owned by Chinese entrepreneurs. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Something, something.